Thank you, as always, for joining me. This week, we'll hear from The Hermit's Cave, a series that aired over CBS stations on the East Coast from September of 1936 to 1947, 558 episodes. There was also a separate series that ran on the West Coast. From 1940 to 1944, they created 217 episodes. Our story today has no air date. Not sure when this one was heard. It's titled Spirit of Vengeance. Here's The Hermit's Cave. The Mummers in the Little Theater of the Air. something, Marion? Yes, John. I'm glad you came home early. Uh, what is it? Anything wrong? Well, I, I received a special delivery letter from Dr. Andrews this morning, John. Dr. Andrews? Yes. I don't seem to recall him. Oh, you know him. He's the old family physician in Thorndike. Oh, yes, I do remember. What does he want? It's about my brother, David. He's ill? Dr. Andrews explains that there's something wrong with David. He feels that I should make arrangements to come to Thorndike immediately. Well? The letter is worded rather peculiarly. I'm planning to leave in the morning. But you have your reservations, everything ready to go to Florida. Wouldn't it be best to send a nurse or a doctor here in the city to confer with Dr. Andrews in regard to your brother? No, John. I think I should go and see what it is that's wrong with David. Just what does the doctor say? Let's see. The letter is here somewhere. Yes, here it is. It reads, Dear Mrs. Henderson, I've seen your brother within the last 24 hours. Because you're the only living relative he has, I feel I must write and ask you to make a visit to David. Yes? goes on to say, though he's not physically ill, there are evidences of what I choose to call a strange malady. Mm. Perhaps some contact with you may alleviate it. If you do come, make no reference to this letter. And by all means, do not allow your brother to realize that you think there is anything wrong with him. My regards to your husband and son, Dr. Andrews. He hasn't made himself very clear. No, but I know, Dr. Andrews. He wouldn't write to me unless it was urgent. You know best, Marion. You you couldn't get away to go with me, John? No, it's impossible right now. Well, then, I guess I'll take Philip with me. He'd planned to go to Florida with me, but he's dropped out of school. All right. Take Phil along with you. We may not have to stay but a few days and... Then we'll come back here and go to Florida as we planned. You do just what you think best, dear. We'll take the car. Philip can drive, and we'll start out in the morning. If there's anything that I can do, you wire me as soon as you get there. I will. I feel rather ashamed. I haven't seen David in a year. Not since the day we drove out to put the new monuments on Mother and Dad's grave. That's right. I remember now that he didn't seem like himself. 
David was always quiet. That day he talked a lot. Yes, I guess he did. He kept lamenting that that fact that Albert had died during the war and that he was left all alone in the old homestead. Well, we've invited him here to visit us a lot of times, Marion. He never has come. Now there's something very wrong with him. But Dr. Andrews wouldn't have written. My place is there with him. A strange melody. I wonder just what it can mean. We'll drive out first thing in the morning and find it. There's the house, Mother. Yes, it hasn't taken us long to make the trip. Well, it's a pretty big old place for Uncle David and that housekeeper to live in all alone, isn't it? Yes. David isn't taking good care of it either. Needs paint and remodeling. Why didn't Grandfather leave the place to you, Ma? Because, Philip, we have plenty to live on, and David is older than I. Uncle Albert, who was killed in World War I, was older than Uncle David, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, oh, oh, watch out now. The driveway and the yard is up only a few yards. I see it. Oh, Martha will be pretty upset when she sees visitors coming. Nothing in the house to eat. Oh, gee, I hope she has something. I'm starved right now. Uh, don't drive so recklessly, Phyllis. I am not. I can handle this car. Drive around to the rear entrance. We're going that way. Okay. Oh, look. Old Martha's peering around the curtain. What did you do that for? Just to let him know who it is. You get the things out of the car. I'll go up ahead. And remember... If you do notice anything strange about Uncle David, don't say a word about it. I won't, Mother. Martha! It's I, Marion! Why doesn't she let me in? Won't she open the door, Mother? I guess she doesn't know who it is. Martha! David! It's I, Marion! Marion and Philip! Oh, you... Hello, Martha. Hello. Well, now that you're here, I guess you'd better come in. Oh, thank you. Go on in with the luggage, my Philip. I'll, I'll hold the door. Okay. Well, surprised to see you? No. I ain't ever surprised by anything now. Oh, I decided that before I went south for a couple of months, I'd spend a few days with David. Oh, I see. Where is he? Sitting in the front room. Must be he didn't hear us drive up. Oh, yes. He heard the car, all right. We'll go in and say hello. Take off your coat, Philip. Martha will hang it up for you. Here you are, Martha. Now, don't fuss a lot for us, Martha. We'll eat anything you have in the house. We don't want to be a bother to you. Nothing upsets me nowadays. That is, nothing that's real and can talk. It's the things that can talk. Take up all my space for worrying. What do you mean, Martha? Oh, never mind. Uh, come along. Let's go and see Uncle David. Well, David, here you are. How are you, David? We're all here together now. Yes, David. Here's your nephew, Philip. Hello, Uncle David. Glad to see you. You should speak to your grandmother and grandfather first. What's that? Uh, you're looking well, David. And you should speak to your mother and father before me, Marion. They're watching you, looking right at you, waiting for you to speak to them. But grandfather and grandmother are dead, Uncle David. They came back. Sit down, Philip. You hear me? They came back. Back from the dead. Philip! Don't sit down in that chair. What's that? Your grandfather is sitting there. Can't you see him? There's no one in this room, David, but... You, Philip, and me. Ask Martha. She knows they're here in this house. Oh, we won't talk about it anymore. Tell me, how is everything on the farm? Mm, you think you can humor me. Tell me, how is everything on the farm? David. I... You can't. They came back. I don't know why. Do you hear me? I, I don't know why. But they are here. And if you stay in this house, you'll know it, too. Night and day, they never leave me. They follow me everywhere. In the night, they watch me. During the day, I have to humor them. Uncle David. Your Uncle David is ill, Philip. No, I'm not ill. And don't you call Dr. Andrews for me or anybody. If dead people come back, they come back. That's all there is to that. We don't want any strangers in this house. All right, David. Oh, 
What is it, Mother? What do you want now? You want to get out of this room. Is that it? Look. Mother, look. That chair. It's rocking all by itself. Your grandmother just got out of that chair. No. Now she's standing over by the door. She wants to get out of the room. Don't you see her standing there by the door? Baby. Sometimes she will open doors all by herself. Then again, she wants me to wait on her. Like now. Let her out, Marion. But there's no one standing there. Let your mother out, Marion. If you don't, she'll be angry all the evening, all the night. Let her out. All right. But, David, don't you see it's silly for you to give into a whim like this? You've lived alone too long. You and Martha have imagined these things. You... Let her out. Hurry. There. Now she's satisfied. And Father is satisfied. He was getting angry because we made her wait. Oh, I should never have left you alone in the house like this. Oh... What's that sound? You hear that, don't you? Yes, I do. What is it? You remember how our father always did that, Marion? What? Tapped his foot when he's displeased. Hear him? Well, he's tapping his foot now. No. It it can't be. I... Oh, I have to live in this house. Hear that sometimes for hours. You won't want to stay here long. In a house where the dead come back to drive those who are living away. You want to know why they came back? Well, I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. They aren't going to drive me away. You hear that, Father? You aren't going to drive me away. You left this property to me. I was the only one left. Albert was dead. Marion is married and has money of her own. He left this house and land to me. You aren't going to drive me away. Tap your foot all you want to. Sit and stare at me. Can't drive me away. Go on, tap some more. You're not going to drive me away. In a minute, I'll have it all fixed. Just one more strip of paper to hang. Just one more. It's down at the end of the hall. Who is it? It'll soon be fixed. Soon now. Oh, David, it's you. Go back to your room, Marion. What are you doing? It's something I have to do every night. Paper the wall? I don't understand. If I don't do it, Father gets angry. Oh, you're ill. Don't you understand? Martha agrees with me. She says you're ill. Father is dead, David, and so is Mother. They don't come back to haunt you. Now, now stop and go to your bed. I'll have to call the doctor for you. We'll have to take you away. You'll never take me away. It's midnight and you stand here papering a wall. Can't you see that you're ill? It's all done now. Now I can go to bed. Yes. Let me walk down to your room with you. All finished now. All right. Now we'll go to your room. But don't look back. Don't look back at that place on the wall. I won't, David. If you do, your father won't like it. Come. Just leave your paste and paper on the floor. Wait a minute. Stand still. Yes? Did you hear that door open? Why? I... I did. Are you sure? It was the door to my bedroom. Oh, no. You, you see, you're still imagining it things. It was the door to my bedroom. You know who went into my room? Father did. Oh, David. He went into my room ahead of me. He's waiting for me in there like he always does. He won't let me sleep. I'll have to sit and stare into his eyes all night. Oh, now I know what you heard. It was Philip. See, he's coming down the hall. He heard us talking. He's coming to find out what's wrong. Where is he? He's coming down the hall. Well, what's he doing? He, he stopped, standing where you were papering the wall. Don't let him stop there. Don't. Philip, get away from there. You heard me. Don't stand there. Get away. But look, Uncle David. Look on this wall. Fool, get away. Mother, come here. See? Here on this wall. Can you see by my light? It's all damp. And it's the outline of a human form. Now you've done it. I'll have to paper it all over again. 
paper it all over oh, again. Oh, Philip, now you've got him started again. He just papered this wall. You have to cover it all over again. Mother, I tell you, there's the outline of a human figure on this wall. You saw your grandfather. He does that. No, it wasn't the figure of an old man. You said enough. <gasps> oh, David, you've hit Philip with that brush. I'll hit him again if he doesn't keep still. Put down that brush. Don't, don't you dare hit him again. Philip, run to your room and lock it. Mother, Uncle David isn't crazy. He knows what he's doing. You get out of this house. Don't you dare touch me again. Martha! All of you get out of this house if you know what's good for you. Martha, come here. Get out. Help! The house belongs to me, doesn't it? Help! I order you to get out. Martha! Oh, Martha. Martha, help me get David to his room. You go to your room. Don't order me about. All of you get away. You've got it all covered up now. Come to your room. Oh. You have to talk too, do you? Well, I'll show you. Oh, no. I'll choke the light oh, no. out of you. <laughs> Stop, David, stop. Stop. Take your hands off, Martha. I fixed her. Run, get the doctor. Why, your father to come immediately. She tried to kill Martha. David's completely lost his mind. Something is terribly, terribly wrong. is wrong with David Garr? Is he in the throes of madness? And do the dead return to take up vigilance in the old house? Why does David paper the wall at night? Eh? The hermit will tell you before the night is done. <laughs> Sitting downstairs, Dr. Andrews comes into the room. <laughs> oh, Dr. Andrews, is there any change in Martha's condition? I think there is, yes. Can she talk? I think she could if she wanted to, but she just lies there staring. Sometimes I think she's ready to speak, but she doesn't. Well, how about Uncle David? He's locked in his room all right? Yes. David is sleeping. I've given him a sedative. He's safe for the night. Oh, it's all so terrible. Uh, believe me, I never had any idea there'd be any violence connected with it. Else I wouldn't have allowed you to come here. All arrangements are made for his removal to an institution in the morning. Oh, poor David. I never realized that mother and father dying had affected him so strongly. It, it's all come about because he's been here alone. Well, did you tell Dad and the doctor about the chair in the room rocking all by itself? And the tapping of the foot on the floor that we heard? Yes, and I heard it one day when I dropped in here to see David. I couldn't account for it. Neither can I. I still can't. How about that figure that I saw on the wall? David papering the wall is due to his crazed mind. He thinks father is there. But I did see a figure on that wall. All of you talk in riddles. I saw the chair rock and I heard the tapping, but I saw no figure on the wall. I did. Now wait. The wall was damp from the paste. Your lamp cast a shadow on that spot. And then when Martha came, she started to say something about it. It was then that he tried to kill her for it. Your uncle is out of his mind. It will all be ended in the morning. You'll be taken away and Martha will... Help! Help me! It's Martha. Hurry. Up the stairs, quick. Something has happened to her. Help me! Help We're coming. We're coming, Martha. Help! Look. Look, running down the hall. It's Uncle David. He's gotten out of his room. I'll catch him. You go to Martha, doctor. I'll get him. Don't let anyone come near him. Help! Help! Martha. What is it, Martha? Oh, what is it? Hurry. Back in here. He, he tried to kill me. Don't, don't talk, Martha. You're going to be all right. We won't let him get away again. Get him. Get the 
easy to talk. If he won't, I'll tell. I'll tell. We'll get him to tell us. Now, don't you worry. Oh, I can stand no more. No more. He called them back. He did it. At first, he said they were here just to frighten me. And then they really came. Who? Your mother and father. But they had a reason for coming back from the dead. You... You... You get him to... Get... David... To tell you... There, there, Martha. You mustn't talk anymore. Oh, Martha? Come away. Come away. She is gone. David. Oh, I killed her. Come away. There's nothing we can do. Come, Mother. To think that my brother would do such a thing. Close the door, Philip. See. John is standing... Perfectly still down the hallway. And David is standing beside him. In the same spot where he papered last night. Can't you get him to go to his room, Mr. Henderson? Wait. I can't get him to walk away from this spot in the wall. It's almost midnight. It will come again. And you won't let me get my paper and paste so I can cover it up. What is it that you want to cover up, David? Oh, John, he doesn't know. John, Martha just died. Get David to his room. Wait. David, what is it that you want to cover up on this wall? Father, he comes back and stands against this wall. I have to cover the spot. He'll be back here at midnight. Why does he come back and stand against this wall? Why? Let go of me. I've got to get my paper and paste and cover up the wall. Now look. Look, it's too late. It's coming. See? You see? Great heaven. What? figure of a human form taking shape on the wall. Let go of me. Let me cover it up. Don't stand here. Get away. This is my house, my land. Get away. John, look. There is a figure on that wall. I see it. It's father standing there. He comes back from the dead to haunt this house. They both come back. Mother, too. They don't want anyone to live here. Now, get away. Get away from that wall. Philip, go downstairs. Get an axe. Something to chop open this wall. I'll go. I'll find something. Don't you dare chop open that wall. Don't you dare. If you do, Father will kill us. He'll kill us. I'll kill you. Don't you open that wall. You won't kill anyone, David Garth. Look. See, it's Marion's father. My father. He comes back from the dead. Yes, and he casts his shadow on the wall. He walks about the house at night. In the day. If we don't get away from this place, he'll kill us. Martha said you called father and mother back. Why? Why? Here's the axe. Chop the wall open. Stop! Stop! You don't know what you're doing. Go ahead. I'll chop open the wall. Wait. It's just a shadow. How can you chop out a shadow? How can you? Tell them to get away and leave me in peace. Chop all around the outline of the shadow, Philip. Yes. No, no, you don't. No, you stay right here. Let go of me. Take your hands off me. Oh! Oh, look. Look. Skeleton. Yes. A skeleton. What do you have to say to this, David? Speak. No. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It's father. He came back. He did it. Did what? He killed Albert. He killed him. Albert. My other brother. Your father. He came back. He killed him. You killed him. You killed him, didn't you? Didn't you? No. No, I... I Tell I... us the truth. Yes. Yes, I killed him. I killed him. But I'm crazy. Can't you see? I'm crazy. Albert wasn't killed in the war. He came back. The land would belong to him. So I had to kill him. You weren't crazy then, David. I'm crazy now. Who wouldn't be crazy? Mother and father came out of their graves to haunt me for killing him. Yes, they came back. And a shadow appeared on the wall. You couldn't hide your sin, could you, David? You killed your own brother. And the dead came back to haunt you. Until you were found out. Albert's shadow on the wall 
paper wouldn't cover it up. <laughs> no, no paper wouldn't cover it up. And the dead came back to haunt me, drive me crazy, crazy. They haunt me, haunt me. The dead came back to haunt me. <laughs> David Garth to tell the truth. He could hide it no longer. <laughs> Ted on legs. Turn them on. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs> All characters, places, and occurrences mentioned in the Hermit's Cave are fictitious, and similarity to persons, places, or occurrences is purely accidental. That's it for this episode of The Horror. If you want to hear more from The Hermit's Cave, find past episodes of this podcast, all the other podcasts, our shoutcast stream, and everything else, Relic Radio. Just visit relicradio.com. If you enjoy this and all the shows and would like to help support it all, click on that donate button. Your donations make all of this possible. So as always, to those who have, thanks for joining me today. Talk to you again next Saturday with a story from Dark Fantasy on another episode of The Horror. Horror is produced by and for RelicRadio.com. Rebroadcast of this show without permission is strictly prohibited. <laughs>